Hello all and welcome to the show that proves beyond a doubt that with indomitable strength and the ability to harness the power of one's mind, one's circumstances do not define their limits in life. My name is Rafil Wemwil, we are here for only today while Buleng is away. So today's profile is one of incredible resilience because as Irish author Michael Scott once aptly put it, the strong survive but the courageous they triumph. Let's meet Debo Hotwala. Debo Hotwala, born and bred in the Free State, was brought up by his grandmother from a tender age. His childhood seemed fair when staying with his grandmother. Shortly after I was born, I'm told, uh, my mom used to work in South Solbeck and lived there. So she left me with my grandma at a very young age. While enjoying being raised by his grandmother, Debo's mother came back to take him with to Valcom. Me and my mom sort of reunited and I've, I went to live with her. At the time, he had already my younger brother, who came from a different father. So um, from then on, I then went to live with them and my stepfather. Being with his mom turned out not to be as comfortable as he had anticipated. My mom started dwelling into things like alcohol and whatnot. And all along, my mom was more like a housewife. <coughs> and and then she, then she started working because then we, we didn't have like a consistent source of income because at the time my stepfather would only give us money when he feels like, you know. Deboha's mother started abusing alcohol and physically abusing her children. Baby, <laughs> Being their direct neighbor, Mrs. Sophie Mukoni saw the abuse and tried intervening, but failed. The physical and verbal abuse became a daily beat in Deboho's life. On that day, I, I was boiling the water for her. And then it happened that I, I happened to sleep on the table because I was really tired. Uh, so she came through uh, late that night. And when, when she got in, I mean, she had her own key, so she unlocked and got in. I was woken up by her. You know, already beating me up, and unfortunately, the water in the the water in the kettle had boiled out, basically evaporated. And you know, I remember that kettle was like red, you know. Um, so after beating me up, she was obviously fighting me that I had left the kettle there. Uh, obviously, she's intoxicated, and neither did she remember that you know I'm only human, and I was bound to sleep because I had been working all afternoon. And she, she took that um, cuckle and basically was beating me up with it. So I have scars here where, you know, I was beaten up with, with that hot cattle. This incident is still vivid in his mind to date. I remember the one incident where I think she sent out um, police to come and look for me in the streets. And then I was running away and, you know, um, one police opened, obviously, a fire um, um I was never shot or anything like that. I think it was just to scare me so I can stop. And I stopped and I was taken home. And the picture that was painted was as though I ran away from home, which was not true. I remember that night I slept there. The morning after I was beaten up again. He used this vacant place as his hideout place from his mom. Unfortunately, it got, it, it got worse so much that I was chased out of the house at some point and I went to leave uh, off uh, handouts uh, from the people of Volcom. And the 
neighbors had tried to speak sense to my mom. Uh, it would be an issue of she was drunk, therefore the next day it's almost like, okay, I'm sorry, and then you come back home. And next time she's drunk again, she beats you up, chases you away. So it, was, it became like something that happens all the time. Sadly, but to his relief, Debo found himself having to sleep on the streets. When I stayed in the streets, then I met some other people that also lived in the streets that had um, different experiences from mine uh, that ended up in streets for, for different reasons. One of his football mates saw that Deboho was sleeping behind their local supermarket. He inquired and Deboho was willing to share his pain. Being in the streets, then I, I was playing with other kids in the streets. Um, I'm playing with, with other kids. There was this one kid, his name is Likula that I used to protect a lot. Like every time somebody wants to beat me, you know kids always want to beat each other up and this and that. There's always groups and stuff. So during that time, I would always be protecting him. And he would tell his parents about me. Ligula Mokhati saw Teboho as an older brother and he one day opened up to him. With the love of the regular party, I record that so we both took man along and we turned and came to our land, starting our land, starting our strategy. So we can go and take a happy kind of gym to see that we feel like we can see it and that we can do. The next thing is that we are going to be sent to a lot of land from our. The next part of land from our is that we are going to be able to do a lot. Likula then started sharing and taking food for Teboho from his home. Likula's mother saw a pattern of Likula asking for extra food. Likula is not going to eat what he wants. I want to go to the market. After getting used to sleeping at dump areas and vacant old shops, the says being taken in by Lugula's parents gave him a glimpse of hope. <laughs> One time they asked me to come over in the evening and then I came over there and I was given a bath to bath and yeah to my surprise I was given a bath to bath and clothes um, some of Likula's clothes and, and stuff. Debo says being on the streets never made him a bad person but rather a strong one. The one thing I did try it was Despite being a street kid, um, you'd find this out in the streets of Wakam. I'd never stolen from anybody. Um, I'd never taken drugs except in winter when I had to take like glue or petrol or benzene to get a little bit intoxicated so you can sleep. Stay tuned because after the break, Deboha tells us about how through the gift of education, all thanks to the blessings of newfound family and having wonderful mentors, he managed, despite all his obstacles, to rewrite his life script. It's Macro's 45th Big Birthday Bash, and our gift to you is big savings. Get the Samsung 55-inch Smart Curved UHD TV for 14999 save 5000 The Hisense Fridge Freezer, only 9999 save 3000 And the Seagate 5TB External Drive, only 2999 Our gift to you, a free 1TB portable drive. Get these and many other great deals in-store and online with Macro's Big Birthday Bash. Macro. Big on life.
Welcome back to Bupilong. So in the first segment, we met Deborah Hotwala, who has survived many harrowing experiences in his early life. This was a boy who was not meant to succeed if you don't believe in any higher power than yourself. But he did. Take a look. Debo Hotwala, despite all the challenges that made his future seem gloomy and blue, found peace to move on and change his story. His first move was forgiving his mother. As traumatic as it was, it became like a rather easy experience to sort of put at the back, not completely forget, but put at the back. And also, it became a little bit easier for me to I think to forgive Mama, there's a person I, I wouldn't believe she was. She was quite a funny person. You know? She she was a good person somehow. You know. Deboha focused on his schooling and excelled. I just focused on my schooling. Um, I really, really started really focusing when I was doing grade ten. I mean, that's when I realized that this life was not as easy. His biological aunt came forth to assist Deboha together with the new family. <laughs> He pursued a career in mining and his life started being a dream. I worked first uh, I worked uh, for SAB, um, making beer, and I, I, I worked also for Impala Platinum. I, sp I spent uh, many years at Impala Platinum. I think if at all, um, these two um, blue chip companies, I, I learned a lot, like in terms of systems, discipline, you know, and what is expected of you as an employee. And I was quite fortunate because at Impala I had a bigger responsibility because I was in the management of the plant. He started traveling and embracing every moment. I had an opportunity to go in and, and work for a company called Koch. That sent me to, to Nigeria. It's a German, a German company, and they sent me to Nigeria to do work in Nigeria. His move to Nigeria opened his entrepreneurial eye. I, I went to Nigeria, and I think that's where I learned a lot about entrepreneurship. Because, I mean, when you get off a plane in Nigeria, there are so many people already selling to you, you know, like, it's like everyone is like so entrepreneurial. He then researched and learned skills of conducting business from his superiors. I had a very a fantastic managing director. He used to take me to minute meetings when he has meetings with the minister, ministers when we're going to go and present to the minister of minerals um, and energy day to the ministry of steelworks and and then he'll throw me in the deep end to do a presentation to such dignitaries you know high level people confidence build and the will to be his own boss Debo started his own company soul africa how i started my business was i already registered a business but when i came home for a holiday in Nigeria. I saw an opportunity and I decided there and then that I'm gonna try that opportunity. If it worked, I had three weeks to make it happen. So if it worked, then I'm not going back. Because to be quite frank, I enjoyed everything about working in it, but there was no life. I, I made quite decent money, but I wasn't able to spend it, you know, and it became really frustrating. Time and opportunity favored Deboho when he signed his first contract. I started my business by seeing an opportunity on one newspaper called Rustin the Herald, where one company called Sichuan Mining was looking for, for trucks to transport chrome between Rustenberg and Wheatbank. And I knew one of the directors at Sichuan, um, Sim, uh, he's quite known, Mr. Sim uh, Mueran, he, uh, Murwani actually, he's quite known in Rustenberg. And then I, I saw the opportunity, and then I asked him about it. And he tried his best to link me up. At the time, I owned no truck. They were just looking for young entrepreneurs that had trucks. So I phoned around looking for trucks. And this guy actually gave me office space in his um, office. And then I made it happen because there were lots of uh, people that had trucks. He used up all his savings to get the company running. I invested uh, 
the money I had made while I was in Nigeria, obviously it needed a startup start capital like for, to fuel trucks, toll gates and, and so on and so forth. So I invested that money in that business and it worked out. Business doing well, the entrepreneurial edge pushed him to do more. Well, I tried a lot of things. I was doing events in Rusting Bay and then I, got a con I had a contract with SAB to supply the promotions and I also developed some concept to help them sell Hansa um, in, in, in Rustenburg. So fortunately I wrote a proposal to them to show them how I could help them improve the sales of Hansa and all that because they were really trying to push the Hansa at the top. Then I fortunately I got the opportunity and, uh, and, and they liked my concept. And then I started this team of commercial boat cruises in Hartubi Sport Dam. Uh, I made quite decent profit from it. I remember <laughs> One of my best, best, best friends uh, actually didn't believe that I could fill up uh, a boat with 200 people. And I always believed I could do it. And I had to take my money and invest in it. It was a bit of a gamble, to be honest. That's how the obvious evolution of commercializing the boat cruises in RTB Sport Dam started. From the streets to the boardroom, you'll want to hear about how a seemingly simple but necessary business idea, the brainchild of Deboho, is now his driving force and even to others. We're back after this break. What's wrong with Triple M? What is illegal here? Who is being defrauded here, Trevor? It is about the best interest of the uh, <laughs> citizens of this country. But the citizens are the ones who are playing, uh, uh, who are members or participants in this. If you put in 15,000 rand, after 12 months you get 1.2 million rands. I mean, who wouldn't go for this? What's question time with me, Mpotsedu? Monday to Thursday at 5.30 p.m. on the SABC News Channel. What causes Parkinson's? How common is it? Your research showed that it's slightly more prevalent in men. Yeah. Um, it's equally affected uh, at women as well. Yeah. And all races can be affected with Parkinson's. There, there is no such thing as one race is more prevalent than the other. Parkinson's disease is the disorder of degeneration of the neurons. Therefore, exposes one to have those unwanted movements of the body. I live my normal life. I wake up in the morning, I do some exercises here and there. It's um, just a movement disorder. It's going to affect how he lives his life. And I think as a family, it's just helped us get a little bit closer and surround him. Catch Health Talk every Saturday from 9 to 10 with Dr. Silo Mutawo. Back to Bupilong. Innovation and entrepreneurial spirit have been the cornerstones of so many great leaders. Now here's a man who refused to give up on life and himself. And today he's a beacon of light to his peers, his community, and already he's passing on the baton. Dabu Hotwala today allows those who once felt pity for him to be proud of him. He has made strides as an entrepreneur and recently came up with a world phenomenon hangover solution. The beverage uh, zero home, if I was to tell you, um, the story actually goes back to Nigeria. This is where I'm saying Nigeria actually taught me a lot of things. Because I remember one time one of our friends was really hangover. And being really hangover, uh, it was one South African guy. It was only two of us a South African guy. Um, and now I started talking to the Germans to say, I wonder if there's no hangover solution. Because being in Nigeria, I had plenty of time to do research and all that. So I started researching about how do you then, how can you develop a hangover solution? Our aim is to create um, a brand that, that will leave a lasting legacy. Our aim is to create a brand that will create opportunities for young professionals to come and showcase their talent 
and grow the brand and grow it into um, heights we would have never imagined. So it's always been, when we started, we always knew this is what we wanted to do and we want to grow the brand that big. The triple R effect which rehydrates, replenishes and revitalizes is also a solution for economic problems, he says. Lots and lots of people drink alcohol and lots and lots of people suffer from hangover on a daily basis, particularly on Mondays and on Fridays. You look at companies, um, there's always sick, sick leave, um, and sick notes um, because people are hangover because they've been taking um, alcohol, lots of alcohol the night before. Now, there's also an economic factor, you know, that, that plays a role in terms of the zero hangover. It's got a role to play there in terms of uh, uh, helping, um, saving so much money that is lost by economy because of sick leaves and people being absent from work. Deboho says the reason for his product to be so big is because of its natural formula. It was designed from plant extracts and natural herbs. It doesn't have your typical caffeine or buran or taurine. It, it's got natural energy. So it doesn't have to be taken only by people that take alcohol. It's a drink you can take on a daily basis, even when you don't have hangover. Um, you, you can feel the kick when you take it. It gives you that energy. And there's no after effects, because as I said, there's no, it's not like it's caffeine that gets injected in your body now, and then, uh, one or two hours later, you're out of your energy and then you have to sleep or you've lost all your energy you had. Mohoro Silitabele, a project manager for the Zero Hangover brand, explains plans for the brand. Zero Hangover, we can't call it a project. It's, it's, it's a lifetime involvement. We, we're planning to be on this one for the longest time. Besides dealing with the hangover, Mukhorosi explains other intentions of the brand. Besides the fact that this product is a functional uh, product, it's not just a product to be consumed uh, for pleasure, which you can, but most importantly the people who see the most benefit will be those that are struggling with the negative effects of a hangover. For Women's Month, Taboho hosted an event sponsored by Zero Hangover. It's business. Um, we all have responsibility um, to plow back. We all have uh, responsibility to embark on things that change people's lives. And this being a woman's month, um, as a brand, we then decided that this is, we want to position ourselves as that brand that shows that uh, we care about our women. Um, and uh, that shows that we know Women's Day, how it came about. We appreciate what the women of 1956 um, did and we understand that women today experience different challenges and we thought then how about we organize an event that directly speaks to women an event that um, that will be so informative and empowering um, and also inspirational for Nelson Mandela Day Deboho empowered street vendors around Joburg uh, for Nelson Mandela Day we embarked on something quite unique, where we gave about 67 street vendors around Jobek um, an opportunity to, to sell a product, our product, and start up. Um, basically, um, I mean, we gave them cases for free as a startup, and we asked them, go and sell. With the money you get there, it's your choice whether you come back to us and buy um, our product again and go and sell again. As many of them, they sold out the, the, the product. As many of them that have, that have come back and ordered the product again. Because he was a struggling student himself, Deboa reached out to students and gave them their first stock for free. They are selling the product from their university residence. And that means they don't have to leave the university to go and work. And the margins they're making on the product are significant enough. So in terms of time, it saves them time. Unlike having to go and do promotions all over and lose the whole day of study while they're trying to make extra income. So with our product, they don't have to do that. I can tell you now that a committed student in selling the product would easily make about 600 bucks a month. Tuso is a third year student at the University of Johannesburg. He told us how he's benefiting from the Zero Hangover brand. For me, it's 
it's easy to, to, to sell this because I'm on campus a, a lot of the time. And this is a chance for me to make an extra buck on the side as well. This for me is a, is a stepping stone to a business. It, it might be small as in selling to people, but this, this is a stepping stone to maybe starting something bigger for myself. His childhood friend says many won't believe his miracle story. Dabuho has written a story that empowers the faint-hearted and has made it his call to empower others. My motto is very simple in life. Um, I always believe that everything you have is what you work for. There's nothing that will come to you unless you, you go for it and go look for it. A man who also values and celebrates the importance of women. Fantastic. Thank you so very much. I'm sure many were inspired, Mr. Twala. And so with that, we are at the end of today's show. Adversity may indeed be the mother of progress, but also remember that a wise man adapts himself to circumstances as water shapes itself to the vessel that contains it. A fitting description from a Chinese proverb for today's show. Thank you so very much for joining me, Rifu Wamuilua, this week on Bopilong. And do tune in again next week for more great stories and voices of triumph against the odds. Goodbye. <laughs>